What is good? Thanks for joining us for yet another episode. We are going to discuss the Carson Wentz deal, specifically the Colt side of the deal. So be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss anything when it drops. We'll be dropping a Jalen Hurts and the Eagle side of this video uh, in the next few days. So just Jalen Hurts wins. <laughs> so if you want to if you want to make sure you, you uh, get the other side of this thing, hit that subscribe button and be on the lookout for that, because that'll be right behind this one. Got my guy Jay Wayne on the uh, ones and twos. What's good, homie? How you doing? Well, it's my birthday week. I just had sex. <laughs> oh, I'm ready to talk about whatever you want to talk about. I got you an ice cream cake, so my duties are done. Mm, it's delicious. I'm going to get another ice cream cake. What do you think about that? I, I, I cooked him dinner and got him an ice cream cake. We didn't have sex, though. So. <laughs> it would have been a trifecta. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly my wife said no, so. I <laughs> mostly. <laughs> anyway. All right, so. Wentz is out of Pennsylvania into Wentz-Indianapolis. I don't know really how to spin that one. Having been to Indianapolis, bummer for Wentz. Uh, he fits right in there. He's from North Dakota. Like yeah. that's, He loves it. Yeah, it's going to be much better fit than the Philly, uh, those Philly, pesky Philly fans. Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of people are just ready to, Wentz is a bust. He sucks. He's garbage. This is a bad trade. Well, that's definitely true. Yada, yada, yada. And I'm 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 gonna go ahead and say that good he, trade. He's a bust, he's, though. He's not uh he's not a bust, and this is a good good deal for the for the Colts side. Look, you know, everything doesn't need to be uh, you know, oh well, he's he's a top three quarterback and looking at like no, he can he can be a top eight, 10, 12 quarterback and still be a really good quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. Um, so well, you the trade the is on the deal there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll throw those up. It was a third rounder this year and a condition second for next year. So if Wentz plays less than in case you were wondering. <laughs> so if Wentz plays less than 75% of the snaps in 2021, the Colts, give up a second round pick in 22. If Wentz plays more than those 75% of the snaps, which I guess is about 12 games, then they have to give up a first round pick. The Eagles or the Eagles will get a first from the Colts. Um, or there's another contingency. If the Colts make the playoffs and Carson Wentz plays 70% or more of the snaps, then they'll have to give up that condition first. So it's a strong, strong trade for the Colts. Cause if, you know, they're basically like, you know, we'd give you the first, if we can bank on having a quarterback all season long, but if he gets hurt, then we're only going to give you the second. So there's a little bit of insurance built in. I like yeah. that on the Colts side for sure. For sure. Well, they're quickly becoming, you know, known as one of the best front offices in the league. And, you know, we, we, at least I was perceiving the Eagles to be up there and you know how quickly that can turn. We'll get to that kind of part of the situation in Philly and how that all transpired and what we think of that. We're going to push that to the end, but now we're going to talk a little bit about the situation that Carson Wentz just went into. Um, and just, I think it's just from basically top to bottom, everything is just an upgrade. Like you go offensive line. That's definitely an upgrade. Obviously you lose your left guard. Sanzo or something that, you know, maybe they didn't necessarily see coming. He was 32, but it seemed like he was still fine. Uh, Not but, super young for an O-lineman. Uh, that's definitely something I could be seeing. They use that 21st pick on um, that, that the Colts super, have this year. Young. Or the, yeah, so, so they have the 21st ahead. pick. You can see them taking a lineman there, you think? I, I think so. They're, they're a savvy front office that those aren't sexy picks ever. But if you could get the right guy, i.e. Quentin Nelson for them, um, you know, it, it just makes all the sense in the world. And for their organization, they're not going to be under that much heat. They're like, oh, we took an offensive lineman. That sucks. It's like, no, these guys know what they're doing. Um, let them do their thing. So I think that's a, a huge upgrade, obviously. Uh, and then you have the play calling in Indy. I think that's a big upgrade right now from uh, the 2017 Eagles, which Frank Reich was a part of where you had that really great offense. Now you're getting Frank Reich and, and once reunited again, I think play crawling upgrade there. Um, if it once would have stayed, it would have been a first year head coach calling plays now, which was from that Colts organization. Uh, but again, I think that's an upgrade weapons as far as the, uh, Skill position, guys, I'm going to say it's a, it's close, but I'm going to go with an upgrade mostly all around. And I'm going to tie with, the play calling into that and call that an upgrade. 
the way they're going to get it done. Even with T.Y. Hilton being a free agent right now, which there's some talks they bring him back. They also have a great cap situation, great front office, like you were saying. Um, so they could they could bring in another stud wide receiver. Um, but even without T.Y. Hilton, when you think about Pittman and Paris Campbell and that running back stable that they have, um, some serviceable tight ends, obviously not Zach Ertz, but uh, or Goddard. I think it definitely is a weapons upgrade. Like Wentz had nobody to throw to last year. Who Travis Fulgham was a wide receiver one for some times during the year right. last year. Yeah. And I mean, and and so I, I think it's an upgrade. And then the defense, I think, you know, semi close, especially if you look at the Eagles, you know, uh, in previous years, that's something they could always hang their hat on, especially that front four, seven, however you want to look at it. But right now I would, I would definitely give edge Colts. So basically all the way down the line here, I don't know what the special teams are like, um, but all the way down the line here, I think it's an upgrade for them. Now let's, maybe dive into some of those points a little bit more PFF had the Colts as the seventh best unit overall in 2020, which is actually kind of a, a slide for the Colts. Uh, but still um, you go with a guy like Phil rivers comes in there. He's only sacked 19 times. That's 28th least in the league. Um, now he likes to get rid of it for sure. So you can tie some of that into saying that Phil's going to quickly get rid of that ball. He doesn't, he's not super interested in getting hurt. He had that foot or ankle injury again, that even might have sped that up a little bit more. Uh, but when you look at that list of the sacks, you know, the guys around rivers who were in the 1920 sack club or in that 28th were guys who played seven games, Dwayne Haskins, guys who played 10 games to a uh, Mullins, uh, Drew Locke played 13 games. None of those guys are even playing a full slate of games and they're getting sacked as many times as Phil Rivers did throughout the entire season. Meanwhile, on the flip side, Wentz last year played 12 games and was the most sacked QB in the league with 50. Now, just like we talked about Rivers a second ago saying that, you know, some of those sacks and getting the least amount of sacks that he they're having, he holds you know, it. He gets rid of the ball. And now Wentz is on the opposite end of that spectrum where he's going to hold it. So now is it going to be the same for Wentz coming into that offense, uh, an offensive line situation? No, probably not. But we can middle that out a little bit. Does and, he get sacked the most times in the league? Probably not. Through through 12 games, missing four games. I'm going to go right. with definitely not. Right. Um, also through 15 interceptions through those 12 games, led the league in interceptions. For sure. But that's what happens when you're sacked 50 times. You just, you just start being like, Hey, I got to do something with the ball here. Let me move around um, and, and, and throw it up. And, and you, we already talked about the skill position players being obsolete. You regular missed chunks of the season hurts, missed chunks of the season. Got it. Missed chunks of the season. You played with like 10 different iterations of that offensive line, which even coming into the season wasn't even right. So then you're playing with even more backup to backup guys who are introducing themselves in the locker room, pre games and all that stupid shit. Um, which Casey has a, a better beat on Eagles than, than a lot of people, because in order for him to be allowed to watch as much football as he does, his wife makes him watch the Eagles every single week. Cause his wife, I do Eagles watch fan. every Eagles game. So he's, <laughs> you know, what's going on with the Eagles. Yeah. I, you know, and I, you know, I'm from that area originally. So, you know, I, I have a bunch say. of friends and I keep that keep that tie going. I'm not an Eagles fan, uh, but we do watch a decent amount. I do have extra screens, so I'm not just watching the Eagles. I usually have three or four TVs going, so you don't have to feel bad for me or anything. Um, I don't know. When you go, there's just so limited. Like, you have all these options, but then you have to have that game on, and then your brother <laughs> comes on, you have to have the Giants game on. And it, Well, my brother like, doesn't come over anymore. That's a couple of years ago. It just seemed like there were an awful lot of stipulate. Red Zone's <laughs> got to be on on one of these TVs. Basically, we can't watch anything else. We're watching the <laughs> Same teams every week, but no, nah, it's cool. It's basically just the Eagles right now. And uh, so anyway, um, so going back to a little bit of talking about Phil Rivers and what he did there and, you know, Carson Wentz is garbage and is cooked and he, he's all this and that. Like Phil Skittish, Rivers, he has no confidence. He's always hurt. Phil Rivers last season, his last season in L.A. or San Diego, however you want to frame it up there. Um 23 touchdowns and 20 INTs. Um, and then he comes to Indy and has 24 touchdowns and 11 INTs. Um, now Phil's touchdown to INT ratio has waxed and waned throughout his career. Um, but most people thought he was cooked coming into Indy. Like I'm not saying he was necessarily reborn here, but he wasn't as awful as I think a lot of people thought he was going to be. And they certainly weren't winning games despite Phil rivers, which I think some people thought was going to happen here. Um, and then on top of that, 
this is all going on with everybody knowing that Rivers doesn't have his best stuff and that deep ball probably isn't as readily available as it maybe once was. And the, even the deep intermediate stuff isn't really there. And that's really not what he's trying to do. Um, so Carson, on the other hand, can give you that deep ball presence back. Um, and so some of what Phil Rivers was, you know, that there's a positive in there of saying, hey, Rivers was cooked. Look at these totals and look what he did in another year in Indy. You know, that that weighs well for Carson Wentz. And then you come in here, you say Carson can give you the deep ball back. Another issue was is Jonathan Taylor was looking like one of the best young running backs in the league. Um, and he saw one of the highest eight man box percentages in the league with running backs over 150 carries at 29.47%. Yeah, but they're in 12 personnel. It's, it's the offensive packaging, well, right? So, All eight man boxes don't matter. So you, you, you can't get the stat necessarily saying what the offensive box was like. Okay. So I understand some of that argument of saying like, Oh, well the eight man box sometimes can be irrelevant. And yes, the Colts will run some 12 personnel, but it wasn't a crazy high percentage over everybody. It, it wasn't, you know, it was over league average. Um, and they also ran some 13 personnel, which not a lot of people run. Um, but that was also not at a crazy 8%, I think, uh, maybe like 53 plays or something along those lines. Um, but so, yes, I understand that argument of saying like, yeah, you, you know, you don't know the personnel on the field and that can dictate how many players are in the box. But Let's some of real. that is, is also predicated towards, hey, we know Phil Rivers is you're shrinking the field when you know Phil's not really going to be taking too many deep shots. That's not what he wants to do. It's not how he wants to play. So you can shrink that field, condense all that stuff, and everything gets a little bit harder. Q Naheen Hines uh, playing really well and uh, doing a lot of dinking and dunking with Phil Rivers here. Um, so, again, Carson can give you that deep ball back. Um, I think that. Carson can give, get that percentage down of eight men's in the box. 29.47. Again, like I mentioned, it's, I think that was like third most out of any running back with 150 carries or more. Um, so Carson, I believe, can, like I said, get that number back down with a deep ball, work in that play action. And then you can bring some RPO back into this offense. Like they want to do um, Carson obviously has some great athleticism. Uh, he can at least administer the threat of keeping it and running himself. And then, like I said, you tie the play action into that. You take a couple more deep shots. You back everybody up. Um, and let's not get it twisted. The, the Colts want to play a little bit more of a power style. We're going to control the run game gap scheme, yada, yada, right. yada stuff. What's that? What's that run to pass percentage there? Well, so uh, that's a, you go from Philly, which was, you know, Carson Wentz getting sacked a lot, whole teams on his back, as you saw in, in 19, he basically willed them to a playoff appearance. Um, and then 2020 just, you know, was not good. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. But again, context. So if you look at the attacks of these uh, two different teams, Indies over here and the ninth uh, overall ninth in run percentage at 45.4%. Uh, percent and 25th in passing uh, 54.6 percent whereas Phillies over here passing it the 11th most at 59.7 percent and running it 22nd least uh, at 40.3 percent so you know Wentz can come in and now he's going to get a little bit more balance he doesn't have to be Superman on every single play and now he does have a little bit of that in his game but you're just by proxy going to remove some more of that and not put everything on Wentz's shoulders um, and be able to get some of that confidence back you can start a little slower if you're the Colts you don't have to come out and everything has to be on Carson Wentz you can come out and lean on that run game lean on the defense and let Carson Wentz get his confidence back and work into um being the player that we've seen in previous, his good is good. And that's what you're looking for. Um, so, you know, they obviously could use some more weapons. T wise, a free agent. I, I believe we mentioned that at one point, Trey Burton was only on a one year deal and, and he was hurt. Um, Mo Alley Cox is another tight end. Uh, he's Mo, a restricted Mo. free Alley Cox or he's, he's, <laughs> he's a restricted free agent. Um, so, and this is a team who typically does like tight ends. So I see them bringing in another tight end. If they don't bring back TY, I could definitely see them bringing in another weapon. They have Paris Campbell, who they haven't seen a lot of, but I, I definitely really like that guy. And I, last year I was a big proponent of drafting him. This year I'm going to be hammering him again. Um, I think he's huge for that intermediate uh, deep. He could kind of do it all. He can hit you in all three phases. You can hand him the ball. Um, you can, you can throw it to him. Sure. He can take it long. You can throw it to him deep. And I think he can crush the intermediate. So he could be a huge part of that offense. And then obviously you have Michael Pittman 
um, who had an okay rookie season. Stock down Michael Pittman. He won't even give up his jersey. Stock yeah. up Paris Campbell. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't necessarily love love that, but you know, are you not going to give up your number to the new QB as a wide receiver? Now, if you're like you know on the defense or something, or uh, I don't know who could have who else could have that. I guess it's probably just wide receivers that can even have a quarterback's number. But like, don't you want to get targeted, dog? Yeah, I mean, just in that sense alone, like just get the man his <laughs> number and tell him to be like, hey, I'm gonna need like 1.1 million. I don't know how much jerseys go for it, or maybe it's 11,000. Like, just play off the number. And it, it's probably got to be under that 10,000 mark for IRS tax purposes. <laughs> yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. They, got they got guys got, for that. They got guys for that for sure. But if someone, if I needed 10 grand for something, you know, it's not, it's not walking around money for me. So I don't. But, but I'm not not living that life. So either way, if, if I'm, if I'm Carson Pittman, use six at USC, I'd kind of, I'd, I'd take the six and kind of just playfully poke at him be like, all right, dog, I got your number then, about to be. And then I'd be like, I'd be like, I'd, I'd like call hut and look at him and then throw it to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Naheen Hines and all this is probably gets his stock affected the most. Phil rivers is a dink and dunker and dunker. what, what looked at Hines, a lot of the looked Hines way a lot of times. And, um, well, you know, I think Hines, up. sure. And, and Hines earned everything. He, he was great last year, man. And I'm not hating on Hines at all. He still could have a fine season, but I definitely think the exit of Phil Rivers hurts his fantasy stock a little bit. I don't think Jonathan Taylor's stock can get any higher, um, but I think you can get out of those box, even with those boxes he was crushing. So I think you can get that percentage down a little bit and, and even get better in his second year. Um, so I think, I think this is a great move all around for the Colts. They had, you know, they didn't have a ton of options and they still somehow bullied their way into this trade of not having to give up a ridiculous amount. Um, and yeah, Carson they were like basically give up wanted to go there first and it was, and a, it was a match made in heaven for, you know, everything that was going on. This is exactly what the Colts needed. They've been a well-run office. I mean, you don't lose a guy like Andrew Luck and continue to be talked about as a really well-run organization. It's usually like what the hell's going on. Um, but Ballard's doing an exceptional job there. And like we talked at the top there, like you don't need Carson Wentz to come in here and be 2017. Everybody knows he's, you know, so good and on the track to be a possible MVP, yada, yada. I don't need 2017 Carson Wentz. I need somewhere between 17 and 19 Carson Wentz to show up and just be okay. Like, I think that this guy is for sure a top 12 quarterback in this system and could be even higher as, as uh, you know, as he progresses and gets his confidence back and, you know, he's a, he's a man of faith and that's where him and Frank Reich have their common bond a little bit where they shared a lot of things, you know, they're, they're into, you know, reborn Christians or, or whatever. This is, this is once his rebirth here. Like, you, you know, come out of rise out of the ashes, like a Phoenix, you know, how, so this is you? like his saviors, Frank, Reich. I guess. I don't know. He probably thinks he's Frank Reich's savior, but whatever. I mean, nah, not if they're going to church. Only Jesus. That's yeah. The only savior. Anyway, uh, so I, th I, I think this is a great fit. I, I don't think everything, like you said at the top, everything doesn't need to be. Oh, he's the worst. Oh, he's the best. Like there's some middle there, and that's where Carson Wentz needs to be, and probably will end up being like. 12, 12 is, is a good spot to realistically think he's like the QB 12 ish. I mean, right that would be fantastic. I could, I could easily see him in, in a year or two being considered back up into that eight to six QB range. Like he's got how good's your good. His good is really fucking good. Yeah. It's just, um, it, there's just, you know, it's been a while since we've seen his good and recency bias is that I mean 19 was good man he put the whole team on his back he had similar he had some offensive line issues again in 19 he had, he was thrown to Greg Ward he was thrown to a tight a converted tight end his yeah, but, his other tight end on the field was some guy who you didn't even know who it was like there he he played pretty well in 19 all things considered um and then you know yeah do I love some of the stuff you hear about Carson Wentz? Not necessarily, um, but uh, you know, again, some like we talk, we've talked about it a little bit. Like there's there's a bunch of dudes, anonymous sources saying that he's this guy, this terrible guy, and, and yada and yada players, yada. Players have come out to bat for him in terms yeah. of, of saying that he's not an asshole and he's not like a cancer in the locker room. Right. I haven't really heard anyone dispute like the issues of him like being uncoachable and not taking criticism very well. well so, but but un you, you uncoachable got in right. 2020 when things were going awry, probably in 17 when he had Filippo and Frank Wright, 
that's not well, what anybody. I read says. something like, about with him and Filippo bumping heads, but Filippo, well, that's, you were saying, that was his. That was his. That was the. Chicago. That was the job. That was the role. That was the role of Filippo. They had a, a good cup, bad cup thing going, where this is how they played this thing, and they got the best out of Carson Wentz. Well, that's, that's probably you, you can't have good cop, good cop played by a guy wearing a visor. Well, that's, you know, Doug, I never really <laughs> loved Doug Peterson. He wears that stupid fucking visor. And it's then terrible. it's like, he's got these, he might as well have those little fucking opera glasses. <laughs> like, mm, what act yeah. are we in here? I'm looking through these, I got the tiniest fucking glasses ever. And I'm just looking through the bottom of them in my play sheet. Like, and just, he did, and just the mismanagement of what he did last year, as far as play call, you could, it, I would be mad too. If I was Carson Wentz, I'm a fucking dude watching football here. I'm nobody. And like, I like, what are you doing? You are making this so hard on him. Like, oh, you said hard on, um, so, well, anyway, I, I'm with you on on not feeling not not loving the things that you hear about him in those aspects. But I mean, Frank Wright coached him, so he knows what he's getting into already. So that makes me feel better about it. And it's a better situation. So, I mean, if you have Carson Wentz on your dynasty team, you know, you're feeling great. Yeah, I mean, as soon as all this stuff came out, I was I was saying I'm still buying Carson Wentz, and uh, if he probably could have got him for cheap, and he's probably a little less cheap than he was before, but still not super expensive right now. So, but you're holding though now, even though oh, you got a oh, you got I'm, a value I'm, bump. I'm personally absolutely holding, and I'm I can't wait to see where he ends up being in ADPs because he'll be a guy that I think will be very obtainable in super flex drafts as your. You know, if you want to wait super long for a second QB, but definitely your third QB, like I'm all in on that. Um, and I think that'll be great. And I, I think that, I would I think feel fantastic just, with him as my third QB and would reach a little bit. There's so much ceiling that. to be reached there. Like I, I could definitely feel the third QB, second QB. I want to get something a little more. Certain, that's fine, but that's fine. I, I, I understand that. But again, I just wanted to go back and we talked about the, the, the cancers in the locker room and yada. And there's a bunch of fucking anonymous sources. Like that's a bullshit. Like you, you could be talking then to six you dudes Chris who barely and... talked to, who barely talked to Carson Wentz and he doesn't have anything to do with, or maybe they just didn't like him because he shit on him once or twice in practice or whatever. But then you have stalwarts of the team. Right. Chris like Long, said, Malcolm, Chris Jenkins. Long, Malcolm Jenkins, Jason Kelsey, Fletcher Cox, like all those guys have come out and defended Carson Wentz that this isn't who he is. He is. He is a good dude. Like one thing, not, not quite as good as I thought that he was. I thought he was a little bit more of an all shucks guy, but that's kind of his routine. Well, that uh, plays but, into what I was going to say. It's so like, we haven't, we haven't addressed it. And I think this might be one of the titles of the video is can Carson Wentz bring Indianapolis a Super Bowl and oh, Super Bowl I don't, Colts for sure. I mean, he's, but he's not attractive. I don't know that you can win with an ugly quarterback. I mean, that's why Tommy has so much success. Yeah. I mean, I can't, can't argue facts, but <laughs> can you win with an ugly quarterback? We'll see Colts. We'll see. I think so. There's definitely been ugly quarterbacks that have won. Roethlisberger has a Super Bowl. It's been a while. Eli Manning has a Super Bowl. That's true. So there's been two ugly quarterbacks. Nick Foles has an ugly has a quarter has a Super Bowl. He's fucking Napoleon Dynamite. (laughs) All right. Well, I guess he answers yes. Then so he's (laughs) Super Bowl. I wonder what the Super Bowl odds are. Are You making that bet? I mean, it can't. I'm sure it's not super long. Like they were already a pretty good team with Phil Rivers, and they, you know, they took the they took the Bills toe to toe and gave them everything they could handle. They could have easily won that game. Yeah. Um. So. Poor, I feel bad for Phil. He had to go out and never really did anything in the playoffs. But yeah, so what happens when playing the arrow with Tom Brady and Drew Brees and Peyton, Peyton Manning. Manning. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right, well, let's get out of here. I think uh, again, I, I'm, 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 I'm Team Carson. Fuck the haters, and uh, be sure to. Pennsylvania. This is not Pennsylvania anymore. They have a huh, team. Be sure to uh, hit us up with a, a rate and review if you're listening on the podcast. Be sure to subscribe if you're listening on the uh, on the tubes. Uh, just kindly scroll over and select those buttons. No need to smash anything. Smash uh, it. Until next time, we'll be on Jalen Hurts, and then we'll be bringing you Rashad Bateman and some ADP updates. So be sure to tune in for all that. Peace.